So I hate to admit it, but we have quite a big problem with this van. The problem lies with the suspension and that the weight of the conversion is doing to the van. Essentially, we are at our maximum gross vehicle mass that is legal for this van, which is about three and a half tons. The conversion and everything we put inside has pretty much put it onto the limit. We just put a lot of stress on the stock suspension. The problem with that suspension is not upgradable. All right, let me show you what I mean. If we come under the van, <laughs> this is your parabolic spring. And then this little black thing up here is your bump stop. In vans like this, they actually have a bump stop that is quite compressible. It's kind of like a big marshmallow, but it should not be touching our drive shaft down here. The bump stop in this van is connected to the chassis and there should be a quite a big gap. When we first got the van, there was a gap of about 15 to 20 centimeters. As you can see, that is completely gone. So essentially, that is how much our conversion weight has compressed the rear spring to reduce the gap between our bump stop on the driver's side where most of the weight is. It is actually slightly worse. On the driver's side of the van, we have all our kitchen and our cabinets. We do have our water tank on this side too, but it was the only place we could have put it because the fuel tank is on the other side. So there is a lot more weight on the right hand side. So I'll show you what the bump stop looks like on this side. So you can see there it is completely worn down, basically flat, and that does cause quite a problem. So this suspension is causing a bit of problem when we're driving. It's still legal, but the driving quality isn't that great. The driving quality is really compromised when the road is a little bit rough. When that bump stop hits hard against the drive shaft, then it really just sends hard jolts through the van. So I really wanted to try and fix this myself, and I was finding it incredibly hard to find a suitable solution. The first thing I really need to do is try and upgrade the parabolic leaf spring suspension to try and reduce that sag in the back. So I need to bring that lift back up to do that, you need to upgrade the spring. The problem with that is that you cannot upgrade parabolic suspension. They are completely different to stacked leaf suspensions where you can possibly just add another couple of leafs to it. With parabolic suspension, it is tapered at each end. So you cannot upgrade that with additional leaves. The other problem is Ford does not offer a factory upgrade either. So you are stuck with what you get. One way you can upgrade your suspension is take it to a suspension manufacturer who will actually custom build you a new parabolic suspension. But that is quite expensive. Plus, you have to find a manufacturer that will work with you. You have to leave your van there for a while and it can be, you know, upwards of a couple of thousand dollars. I didn't want to go down that route. I really like the DIY route, doing it myself. I also learn a lot of things from doing it this way. So I was really trying to find a way to do it myself so I can show you guys how anyone else can do it themselves if they're coming up with the same problem. So I was scouring the internet, really trying to find a solution and I came across these guys at Super Spring. <laughs> So we've got three things that we're actually going to install in the van today. That is going to be a set of super springs and then a front and rear set of sumo springs. So I'm going to go through that whole process and really explain what they all are going to do and have a complete before and after comparison to really show the difference that I really hope this is going to make and give you an honest review of how well I think it does. So the things I want to achieve from this is firstly reduce that rear sag, bring that back up to kind of near factory height, which will really result in a much better ride quality. It's also going to do the same for the front as we have put quite a bit of weight throughout the van. The front's coil suspension has also suffered. The third thing is sway. These vans are very top heavy, especially with, you know, you're stacking up the roof. At the moment, we get quite a lot of sway. So that's the van doing this around corners. This should stiffen up the suspension enough to stop that. So I'm going to try test all those three things out and see how we go. So to get a good baseline of our current suspension, I'm going to drive through a couple of scenarios on good roads, bad roads and dirt roads. I'm going to attach a GoPro underneath the van, see what kind of movement it makes. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the Super Springs installed to see how much different it makes. I'm really hoping that it will make a difference because it is a really rough ride at the moment and I'll show you why.
feel every single one of those bumps when I can see on the camera that the bump stop is just hitting straight up against the chassis with no suspension at all. So it's definitely a lot worse when you're on the gravel road, but you still feel quite a lot of shakes when just driving on the highway. So I'm watching the camera as we drive to see how it goes and also to make sure I haven't lost it. But the bumps are amplified significantly when you hit one at high speed. We've been driving on highway speed, hit a small pothole and it feels like someone just punched your spine. So I really want to see how much this super spring system is going to do to the van. So I'm going to get a baseline data of all the wheels. So from the floor to the top of the wheel well is 830 mils. To this height is my measurement. Hopefully we're going to increase this space on all four tires. 800 millimeters, 790 mils, 795. So the only tools you really need to do this insulation are a socket set, a jack, C-clamps, some jack stands. And I didn't have any of this. And because I like doing it all myself, I just went and rented these from the local hire shop. It cost me $35 for the whole weekend. I've jacked the van up on the rear toe bar as I obviously can't jack it up on the axle because that's what I need to lift. Always remember, if you are going to be working under a vehicle, jack your car up on jack stands. Do not rely on a jack as they can fail and you could get crushed. That is the last thing you want for anyone's safety. If you're going to be doing anything like this, remember to jack your car up with jack stands. <laughs> So the two products I'm going to install in the rear of the van here is a super spring assister spring. So this is a spring that just helps your factory parabolic spring. It has these rollers built in so it evenly distributes the weight when the spring is going up and down. It's kind of a floating spring per se. It doesn't really clamp straight onto the factory spring. The second is an upgrade on the bump stop. This is the original bump stop I just pulled out and this is the sumo spring so you can see the difference they designed it out of this super strong material that has a super high compressive strength this just bolts straight onto where this came out of so that's like a two second fix same with the super spring it's only two bolts and that's the whole thing oh, this is the sumo spring all it is is the sumo spring itself a flat washer and then a spacer I'll also apply the locking thread liquid onto the thread Okay, this is the sumo spring installed. You can see the difference between the standard and the upgrade. So when the steel super spring is on and this van is lowered again, they recommend that this is about an inch to a half an inch off this plate, which is connected to the drive shaft. So I'll attach this, put the wheel back on, and then lower it and then see where we sit. And we might have to either add or reduce the spacer up the top here. So the insulation of the spring itself is actually so simple. It's marked out pretty much foolproof. Passenger front side, do not touch this bolt. It has all the stickers on there so you can't stuff it up. All there is is there's two of these rollers so you just undo the nut on one side and we're just gonna attach it on and see if we can get the rollers to go in the hole. I think we're gonna aim for the middle hole and see how we go. So the middle hole in this one as well, give it a bit more firmness. And to do that, I'm probably gonna have to clamp one side down and then clamp the other side down with these C-clamps. Okay, so now this is attached. You can see it just floats in the middle here. It doesn't actually bolt on. It's literally just attached by this roller here. 
and then the roller on the other side. Now what I'm going to do is going to put the tyre back on lightly, let the jack down and just see where the sumo spring sits. So then to see if I need to add another spacer. Okay, so I think that is exactly where we want it. Just do the other side and then we'll move on to the front sumo springs. For comparison, this is the sumo spring and this is the size of the factory spring. This one is even smaller because it's been so heavily compressed. So that's going to make a massive difference on this side. And this is obviously just destroyed from the overuse of it. They're not really designed to be ridden permanently on the bump stops, unlike these things. Much better option. So the second spring and sumo spring are in there now. So I just thought I'd mention why I'm down here. If you do like these videos, remember to hit that like button below. That'll really help the channel out. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe. So I also wanted to remind you about the new website, saltyvanventures.com and our new exciting van consulting service from absolute beginners. They can learn how to convert their van. I'll walk you through the process. It's also a platform where you can find all the resources I use to build this van. So the plumbing diagram, electrical diagram, all the stuff we bought for the van, you can find it there at saltyvanventures.com. So the front suspension upgrade is going to be in the form of what they call a sumo spring. So this goes inside the actual coil spring. So I've jacked it up, released all the pressure off the coil spring, and then apparently it's pretty easy to install. All I have to do is just clean up the coil spring with a bit of soapy water, give it a bit of lubricant to kind of squeeze this in. And then I just kind of feed it into the middle section of the coil. This should only take me about five minutes each side. It's a pretty quick one and should give this front suspension a little bit more help. This wheel has hit the wheel arch before and it has hit the pinch weld and given us a really big scare when we're going down the highway at 100 kilometers an hour. So this will definitely help stop that from happening. There is a deeper groove and a shallower groove. Apparently the deeper groove needs to be on the bottom. I don't know how this is going to go. Video. <laughs> that was actually really easy. It just slides right in. Yeah, that's it. That took me about two minutes. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll do the other side, lower it down, and we'll measure all four tyres and see how much we've gained. It's the first time we've been in the car now. The first thing is going to be getting over this driveway because we actually have quite a steep little driveway here. It's always like gives heaps of body roll when we go over it. Oh wow. It's a body roll. It's definitely better. Much stiffer, less roll. And also the bounce back wasn't really there. Yeah, because it's normally like a whip when we yeah. go over it the first time. Yeah. Uh, it definitely feels like we're riding higher now. Speed bumps have always been particularly nasty. It was always at the arse end of the speed bump when it's coming off. We'd always bottom out on the bump stops and then you get this bounce back. So here's a speed bump to see what's going to happen. Wow, that's much better. No bounce back there on the way back up. It kind of just rolled off the back and stayed there. So after yesterday's test drive, I found out the suspension has like exponentially improved itself on the rougher roads, on the dirt roads with the lots of potholes but on the kind of paved, it's still quite rigid. And I think I know why. Essentially three parts to this suspension. There's the springs, the bump stops, which is now like a airbag, a permanent airbag. And then we've got the shock absorber. Shock absorber works in conjunction with all three and we want them working in unison. At the moment, because I think I've set the springs too rigid, it's not working with the sumo spring as much as it should. And the great thing about these are they are adjustable. The instructions say for this spring, I should have had to use it on the middle or the bottom hole when you insert your bolt with the roller for the spring. I put mine on the middle. I'm gonna change that to the lower one now so that the super spring is helping my stock spring a little bit less, but then it will give that sumo spring a lot more action 
which will then cushion my ride. There is a happy medium that you are looking for. You don't want it too rigid. That's like a sports car where you feel every bump, but then you obviously want to have a comfortable ride where it takes a lot of those bumps and shocks out so you're not feeling everything on the road. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna adjust this and then trial it out again and see how it goes. Oh yes, this is so much better. I can already feel it. It is just way smoother. I'm keeping an eye what the actual suspension is doing. And it's basically much more in harmony now, the two suspension systems. I can see that before the sumo spring was kind of sitting above the drive shaft when we were just driving normally. So most of the bumps were being dealt with by the spring, which I suppose usually that's what you'd want. But this system allows you to have kind of two suspension systems. And I can already tell just by lowering that one bolt on the super spring, it's made a massive difference. It feels really smooth going over these bumps now. There's no big jarriness like I had yesterday when I kind of probably had the suspension a little bit too tight. But I also feel like I'm not bouncing around like crazy like I was before I did the upgrade where it was really, really bouncy. It was relying all on the spring completely under compression. And the factory bump stop was riding straight on top of the drive shaft, which is what they're not designed for, unlike the sumo spring. Initial reaction's very good. I'm gonna take it on the dirt road and see what difference it makes there. So now that the super spring has been adjusted correctly, you can really see how much all three components work together to offer a more comfortable ride. And this is so well illustrated when seeing the before and after alongside each other, how much better this ride actually is. Okay, the moment of truth to see how much sag we've regained in the back here. Four, it was 8.30, 8.8. So that is 55 mil. That's pretty good, I'm happy with that. And that is purely just from the super spring, the steel. That's not from the sumo spring. The sumo spring is just really gonna help us in the ride quality. This gives us back our height that we've lost from the conversion. This front wheel here was 800 mils before, 835. So that's 35 mils gained. So this was originally 790, 845. So that's the same as the other side, 55 mils. The front right tire here was originally at 795, 825, so that's a 35 millimeter increase. It's been a couple weeks now since I've done the upgrade and I've just noticed an exponential increase in drive quality. It's smoother on the roads, it's so much smoother on the dirt roads, we feel much less bumps. I've also noticed a massive improvement in the body roll. The rear suspension now is so much more capable of dealing with that body roll, which makes driving so much more enjoyable because I can drive a little bit more aggressively now around corners without having to slow down so much thinking that I'm going to roll the whole van. But overall, I'm actually really stoked with this improvement so far. All right, so there we have it. This suspension has just been transformed. I think this is a big problem that isn't really being addressed at the moment. There's a lot of people converting their vans and making them more and more elaborate, which basically basically means they're putting more and more weight in the back. It's reducing the ride quality, extra wear and tear on the van. I think a lot of people don't know about a product, something like this. I didn't until I really started digging. So I really hope that you guys, if you have this kind of problem, that you'll be able to do something about it now. I'll leave the link in the description for the products I've used. But until next time, I'll see you later.